Welcome to the Flaming Greek, the hottest cooking show on the planet. Watch the hilarious duo cooking up adventure with the help of the torch. <laughs> Watch the Flaming Greek and Cami on Foodie TV. www.theflaminggreek.com. Welcome to the show. I'm Flaming Greek Chris Kytus, and we have a great guest to hear, Christina, the ambassador. Thank you for having me. I should say yes, the ambassador of Greek wine. wine. Yeah. So listen, let's start out by. How do you pronounce this, if you want to? This is Zacharias. Zacharias. Yes. And, and what it does that transmit into English? Well, that's actually the last name okay. of the vineyard owners. All right, so we have some great wines today. We have some reds, we have some whites. Yes, we do. I'm so excited uh, to start by talking about Brusco. Brusco is from Crete. And Brusco, in translation, actually means young wine, young tannic wine. So. It's actually a really nice hidden secret of the Cretan people because it's been, they've been doing this for centuries and nobody really knew about it. They were making these homemade wines and the, the way that this happened was the owner of Stellar Importing went to the island, tried a bunch of varietals of this wine and then came back and brought it to the United States. And it's actually like a French Nouveau, it's young, fresh wine. So let's try yes. the Brusco Red. All right, now is this aged in oak barrels? Tell me a little bit about the background. It is young wine, right. and it is Cozzifali uh -huh. and Mandilari. Okay. That is the blend. It's all Greek to me. <laughs> okay, so there's two different types of grapes, yes. is what you try to tell the audience. Yes, that is, that okay. is right. And the grapes are again? Cozzifali, yeah. 80%, right. and then 20% Mandilari. Wonderful, so let's try it. All right, so should we do the swirl thing? Oh yeah, I'm definitely. Do it anyway. So when we do the swirl thing, what is that doing? We're looking for legs. I've always heard about the legs. Just like and this, I, and, I and then you're looking legs. at the color as well. Right. And you see it's like a nice, rich red color. Yes. Smell? Smells like wine. Do you smell that though? Yeah. You see, um, it has, you can smell it's fruity, and that's from the uh, Cozzifali uh -huh. grape. And then the Mandilari has a tobacco scent behind it. I don't know if you smell that. I just smoked a cigar, so I do smell it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's try it. I can see the legs. And, and they're like, look at that. I don't know if you can see in the camera. So they're so far apart, what is that telling me? There's always something about the legs. I'm not talking about your legs. I'm talking about the legs you're on the glass. It's it's from it's from being a new wine. Okay. It's wonderful. Now this would go good with lamb. Lamb, definitely. I mean, this is definitely what I suggest it with. Uh, this is what people from Crete, Crete. Uh huh. That's what they eat it with. They they drink it with lamb. Bah. Right. Bah. So. All right, so we have some saucy sack here, mm -hmm. which is a French salami. We have some um, country sausage and some chorizo. And this is sweet, correct? Um, the you're first have one. to try it. Okay. Everybody's taste buds are different. This is incredible. Like mild, incredible. Amazing. Mm -hmm. What I would pair this with is our Brusco White, which is 100% Milana grape. What are you waiting for? Sorry. Let's go. So I get a strong feeling that you do this like quite a bit. Oh, I do. Like first thing in the morning, you know, you got like a demo. Nine I mean, in the morning, you're drinking wine. I mean, look, it depends, okay? Right. I mean, if, if it's the summertime, I'm drinking white wine at like 7 a.m. Right. No. No, you listen, you know, whatever tickles your fancy. Cheers. Cheers. And it so does pair up nice. It does. This is a sweeter wine. But it's still dry. 
I, I really love this wine. You can have it on a nice warm day. It's really incredible. Cheese, sweet, salami. Yes, goes. Now let me ask you this. White wines are usually wines that women like. Do you find that true and guys like the reds? I think that when it comes to me, I love red wine. I really do. But when it, like I always go for the season. So when it's warmer, I never drink red wine. I'm always drinking white. Um, and in the wintertime, I'm always drinking red wine. And it also depends on what I'm eating. So if I'm having like a meat dish, mm -hmm. I'm always going for red wine. Always. Very nice. All right, so we have that one. Mm -hmm. So what else do we have? Now we are gonna go to another brand that I really love and it's Zacharias. And this comes from Nemea in Peloponnese. Have you been to Greece? No, just on a layover. Just on a layover? Yeah, from um, South Africa. And where are you from in Greece? Me? Yes. It's the mountain area. <laughs> the they tell me like the border of Turkey and, you know, Greece. Yes, on the, on the border of Turkey and Greece. Oh, lovely. All right, Christina, we're gonna get some fresh glasses and we'll be right back. Awesome, yes, perfect. We're back with the ambassador of wine, Hello, Christina. Hello, how are you? Okay, so what are we gonna try now? We're gonna try the Zacharias wine, which comes from the Peloponnese. It is a man. Okay, I believe you. <laughs> this is a Moscofilero. So, so it's a white, dry wine, very fruity, acidic. I can't wait. This now, is actually one of my favorites. Should they be served chilled or room temperature? What do you suggest? I always suggest white wine to be served chilled. Okay. So you did the right thing this time because we chilled it. Yes. That is a great wine. It's kind of like a, yeah, it's fruity like a summery thing. Yeah, it's perfect for a nice summer day. Yeah. Just to relax, have some salami over yeah. here, right? Yeah, so let's do this. Let me just grab a plate. Excuse Thank me. you. And if you're so bold, you can try that. In here. So the Moscow Filero grape actually reminds me of a Sauvignon Blanc. Mm -hmm. It's fruity, it's fresh, acidic. It's a perfect drink for a summer day. So what I'm going to suggest is some of this chorizo. We'll try some of these um, truffles from La Rostichella, black truffle. And we'll Let's try do it. it. The chorizo. A fork for you. Oh, why, thank you. You're very welcome. Here, I'm going to make this easy for us. Oh my god, that smells incredible. I'm going to put it on your cracker if you don't mind. Oh, go ahead. You want more? You want more. <laughs> All right, so this is La Rostichella. Okay, these black truffles are probably the best in the world that I know of. Um, I understand they go for eight, nine hundred dollars a pound, but it's a perfect way to finish this off. So let's try it. So when we're done with that, we're gonna try this white truffle pate. Excellent. I know, just, just the taste of that truffle. That is absolutely incredible. Now, did you grow up with that? Truffles? No, I did not. There are no truffles in Greece, unfortunately. So when did you learn about it, though? Because, you know, you're so young and your palate is, like, so mature. I just learned about it going to restaurants in New York. Um, it's becoming very popular, actually. Here in the city, around mm -hmm. the world. Yeah. And from drinking wine, I feel like I'm such a foodie now. So every time I have wine, I always want to pair it with amazing dishes because I feel like I get more out of the wine and out of the experience. So every time I drink, I'm always eating something. Fantastic. Really goes down smooth. Also leaves a nice, pleasant taste on your palate. Yes. All right, so let's move on. What else do you have? You got a bunch of surprises here. Oh, so then we have the Zacharias Cabernet Sauvignon. 
And this one is amazing. You're gonna try wild berry notes, uh, spices, uh, and then at the end, you're gonna finish off with uh, tobacco. So is which one is um, finished in oak? Uh, this one, it is, the Cabernet Sauvignon is actually Thank you. in French oak for about six months. That is good. This is incredible. Mm -hmm. Action speaks louder than words. Glass is empty. <laughs> Can I have some more? Yes, of course. Delicious. Now, should we have some of this over here? Can I just try yeah. that? Should I put this with the black truffles? Sure. Let's Great. try this, the white truffle. Smell that. That is amazing. White truffle. Let's try that. And what are we trying the white truffle with? Um, I'm going to leave that up to you since you are the ambassador of the wine. Let's do it with the Mosco Filero. Okay. Over. Thank you. What about any of these meats? We have not tried the summer sausage. So Let's we're gonna try that. Do that. Summer sausage. That sounds so perfect to pair with white wine, doesn't it? Yeah. Because it's summer. Yeah. And you got a sausage. We'll try some of this. Something very unique about this wine. So these were all hand-picked, like designer wines. Yes. Blends. Mm -hmm. Definitely, especially the uh, Brusco Red. Mm -hmm. That was hand-picked directly from, the, the owner who made it went over to Greece and was trying family grapes from the estates of different families around Crete. So this is why I feel like this one's so special, because it really is some of the best blends that he was able to find around the island and put them together. So for me and my Greek heritage, you know, we all know about the Italian wines. South African wines are really getting popular in California, but I've had such a time trying to find Greek wines, and they're really not readily available. So where would you know, our viewers have a chance to purchase this? Well, right now I feel like they're coming more into the market. Um, recently, the Wall Street Journal spoke about white Greek wines and how it's a hidden secret. Right. So I think that now more and more wine shops are ordering Greek wines and having them available to the public. Um, so I think that with the exposure and more people learning about the products, it's really gonna get Greek wines put out there on the map. Um, it's actually kind of funny because Greeks, you, the ancient Greeks, were drinking wine like it was water. Well, wine saved the world, really, because the water really wasn't drinkable back and then. And I mean, right? we did it first. Right. Right? Right. Didn't Greeks we? We did it first. They yeah, we really back. did it first. Well, I mean, we, we were. Italians run in a close second. <laughs> yeah, close second. Yeah. But, you know, the ancient Greeks were really drinking wine every day. Um, even when you see ancient uh, drawings of the Greeks, you'll see they're always with grapes. So it's really in our culture, it's the grapes and the olives that we're really well known for. What does the soil have to do with it? Because, you know, we all know about Greece, you know, the soil's so old. What's great is uh, we have a lot of volcanic soil. So that is the best to make white wines. Nutrition. Yes. And in Crete, uh, it shares the same soil as... Um, with, with the olives? With Sandorini as well. No, no, Santorini and Crete uh, share the same soil, 
So a lot of the best white wines come from there. Wow. And it is, it's the volcanic soil that really just makes it rich right. and uh, is able to give the grapes that flavor that you're tasting. So does a white wine or a white grape mature the same way as a, let's say, the, the wine for a Cabernet Sauvignon? Well, I mean, um, they don't mature the same way. Like you're, um, you're definitely aging this. You're putting it into oak barrels. Um, so that's really the difference with it as what, oh, when white wine, you're really, it's fresh. White wine is always fresh. So it's there not some, oaked? Some Chardonnays will be oaked, but you really can't um, do it longer than two or four months. And why is that? I don't mean to be putting it in It won't spot. taste good. It won't taste good. Hey, she gave me the right answer. It won't taste good. It just doesn't taste good. But red wine, the longer, I mean, when it's in oak barrels, whether it be French or American oak barrels, the taste, the grapes are more mature, so it tastes a lot better. Oh, delicious. Do you have anything else? Any other treats? Well, for today, this is all I have left. But I should really be asking you, what do you have for me? I saw it in your eyes. I got lamb chops for you. So listen, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back and we're going to do some delicious lollipop lamb chops. Very good. I'm very excited. All right, Rick's going into action. Let's do this. These are almost done. You get a little char on the back of them. This olive oil is really just so perfect. It is. I gotta tell you where to get. Yeah, you have to because. I need to start using this olive oil. I was with my grandparents, it was a big thing. You know, um, we gotta go get the olive oil. Like they get over these gas cleaning in the car. We gotta fill up. But they come back with like a 10 gallon drum. Of course, that's exactly what we do too. See, in Connecticut, we had the distributorship of my cousin, Steve. Can you get it? With the imported feta with the olives. Olive oil, everything we used to get it fresh. Oh, that's right from incredible. Greece. So you, listen, did you ever do these um, feta cheese, tomato, and mayonnaise um, sandwiches on the old world focaccia bread? Because I'm sure your parents used to make bread. I never ever used mayonnaise. It was always just feta and tomatoes. Interesting. Yeah. Because I used to always like to put a little mayonnaise on there. That probably tastes delicious. I've never mm. tried that. Tomato feta with the old world focaccia bread. I used to have my grandma just make it for me, so yeah. she just always knew to put feta cheese and tomatoes. And I still do a dressing today, which is olive oil with this, panolio, mm -hmm. lemon, and sea salt. Cucumbers, yeah. onions, right? Lettuce. I mean, it's the Mediterranean diet. Olive oil, a little bit of oregano, tomatoes, and feta. It's just incredible. All right, Christina, these are done. I'm so excited to try this right now. You're all yours. I feel like it's my birthday. Yeah, when is your birthday? August 31st. Wow. I mean today, actually. Is it? No. Well, no, but so that makes I feel like ready? this is my birthday meal right now. All right, so listen, we got this um, pretty down pat here. Okay. Hey, listen, we're gonna try this. I'm gonna bring it over here for you. And try to pick the one that is, is that hot? That's good for you, because that's not. And we call these lollipop lamb chops. Oh my God, that's perfect. That's beautiful. Yeah, they're tender. Mm -hmm. Very good. So listen. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you for cooking for me. Who wouldn't? The Greek goddess herself, Christina. Thank you.
All right, so I'm gonna take a little jalapeno here. All right, so I'm just doing a little lamb slider here with a little piece of bread and a jalapeno. A little lamb slider. Good, delicious. All right, so you know this lamb came from the master purveyors. Right. Aaron Bronx and Mark, thumbs up to you, Sam. He's the gentleman that started the operation back in 1957. But all prime cuts of beef. Anything as far as lamb, poultry, we just did a segment on the actual um, T-bones and some filet mignons, but excellent stuff. Mm. Delicious. You just eat it right on the bone, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, no, I'm full. All right, so we'll take some of these. I may have a little bite. Oh, good for you. <laughs> a little, but not the fatty piece. I'll get you a good piece on it. Yeah, a little, a little itty bitty, a little itty bitty tiny. How's that? I don't know, but I haven't had a lamb in a really long time. So, you know what? It might just need some salt. Okay. <laughs> Delicious. Mmm, mm-mm. Well, that's why I don't like lamb. So I actually love the meat from Master Purveyors. I just, um, I just, I just don't like lamb. We'll I tried it, but it, it, it's good if you like lamb, but I don't like lamb personally. But it doesn't mean that it isn't good. It's delicious. Because he's, he's a lamb eater, I'm not. Listen, all the yummy. poultry, all the beef is fantastic. And that about wraps up the show. And uh, the most important thing, of course, we can't forget, is our cookbook. The book. See, see, the, see those, see those handsome fellers up there. Fantastic. Absolutely. Don't forget to get your book at www.flavorgreek.tv. Until next time, guys, stay hot. For a copy of any of the recipes that you've seen on today's program, please purchase the Flaming Greek and Kami Cookbook, a delightful, colorful page photo coffee table cookbook that will have you and your family enjoying these recipes in the convenience of your own home. Cook with the Flaming Greek. To purchase the cookbook, log on to theflaminggreek.com. The price is $44.95 plus shipping and handling. Offer made by the Flaming Greek Production.